the conversation continues with State of the Nation's Brian McLean and Timothy Shea on today's News Talk TNT. Now, amazingly, or maybe just right on cue where one would expect it, during the House Oversight hearing on July 13th in the wake of the Trump assassination attempt, Representative uh, Jerry Connolly, a Democrat from Virginia, used his entire five minutes of questioning former Secret Service Director Cheadle to try and, it appears to try and force her to answer a very low-level question about firearms in a very certain way. Let's watch him attempt to get her to say Americans shouldn't have access to not just AR-15s, but to semi-automatic weapons in general. Let's take a look. I think the job of the Secret Service is difficult on every day, and we need to make sure that we are mitigating all threats, whether that be That weapons, isn't my question. Personnel. That is not my question, and now I think you're evading the answer, which is not a hard one. I am sorry that you feel that way, sir. H how else could I feel, Director Cheadle, when you're clearly avoiding a direct answer to a very simple declarative question? I'm we almost lost a presidential candidate the other day. A 20-year-old had access to his father's AR-15 and got on top of a roof within 500 yards or feet of the podium. And I'm asking you, did the availability of that AR-15, which is replicated all across America, make your job harder or easier? And you're not willing to answer that question? And you think, and, and you wonder why we might have a lack of confidence in your continued ability to direct this agency? I understand your question, and that's the environment. Well, if you understand my question, why not answer it? Because it's the environment that the Secret Service works in every day. Joining us now is the founder of Crime Prevention Research Center, a research and educational organization, uh, which can be found at crimeresearch.org. And he's also the author of More Guns, Less Crime. John Law rejoins us now. John, what, what is your response to how Representative Connolly used his entire time with Director Cheadle there? Uh, well, I mean, it makes me wonder whether or not he understands how guns operate. Look, um, the AR-15, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably actually fortunate that he used that as compared to, let's say, a regular deer hunting semi-automatic rifle. Uh, the two two three round uh, is 40% smaller than what you would normally be required with the 30 6 to go and hunt deer. Um, and one of the things that happened, the reason why Trump is alive today, is not only did he move his head, but there was also a gust of wind, which apparently may have moved the, the bullet very slightly. So, you know, I mean, we're talking about millimeters, a couple millimeters would have made a difference there. And uh, if it had been the larger, heavier bullet that you would have seen in, let's say, a standard deer hunting rifle, uh, it's very unlikely that that gust of wind would have moved it that tiny fraction that it did, and Trump would be dead because it would have hit the back of his skull. And so, <clears throat> but, you know, um, they focus on, uh, on the way guns look rather than how they operate. And... Uh, but, you know, to me, the main, overall amazing thing is that they focused so much on gun control during this hearing. Uh, the problem wasn't with civilian ownership of guns. It was because the Secret Service completely fell down on the job in doing basic security type things. Uh, it didn't secure uh, that, that building there. It didn't meet with the local police beforehand to go and coordinate things. Uh, it, it turns out that uh, the Secret Service sniper team didn't even have radios. They just had uh, their own cell phones with them. Uh, you know, so, and they didn't have it so that the radio communications for the local police were directly patched in with the Secret Service uh, radios. So, you know, even though the local police had come across this guy, had gone up on the roof, uh, and had the gun pointed at him and dropped down and immediately started calling uh, to let everybody know that there was a guy with the gun that they had seen. And apparently over 30 seconds went by there. You know, there's no excuse. And now we find out that the person that the Secret Service had put in charge there was somebody who 
had had many complaints that uh, about her being incompetent for the job that she had disregarded normal protocols that day there are other things that we found out that uh, this, this is the first time that the secret service had had a sniper team at all even though it was at lower strength um to go and guard uh president trump during this election cycle uh, and there are other things that we learned too that i Personally, I just find uh, shocking there, like uh, some of Trump's standard uh, security team had been removed from him uh, to go and take care of Jill Biden, even though she was giving a talk to like 300 people uh, as compared to tens of thousands of people and giving it in, within inside a room in a building. So it was a relatively easy place to go and secure. And yet, uh, even though the Secret Service and the and the Biden administration now admits that uh, Trump had what they regard as credible threats from Iran uh, to go and kill him. Uh, you know, they're removing his uh, standard protection there. And then we also find out finally that not only did the Trump campaign, but the Trump security detail had asked many times. We won't even know. We can't even be told how many times uh, his own security detail asked for additional uh, help and protection. But, you know, the thing is, it's just not the way the Biden administration has treated Trump. Uh, they repeatedly denied requests from Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, for protection, even though he had many threats, uh, even though, you know, he was up around 15 percentage points or so in the polls. And, uh, you know, it's it was clearly for purely political reasons in both of those cases how they were being treated in robert f kennedy's uh case the reason why they were doing it uh appears to be uh to make kennedy have to spend what limited resources he had on hiring his own private security detail and kennedy had people that broke into his house during the campaign um and it was only after uh the Trump being shot, that the Biden administration reversed its previous multiple decisions and gave some protection to Kennedy. So, yeah, I mean, so there's at least five times that they denied Robert Kennedy Jr. Secret Service protection. And unbelievably, the female Secret Service agent that couldn't even reholster her weapon in Butler, Pennsylvania, was seen yesterday on the tarmac right. as part of vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance's security detail. It's just unconscionable. Democrats always be clown themselves whenever they speak about guns, whether they're misidentifying them as AR-47s or AK-15s, whether they're calling them fully semi-automatics, whether they're saying AR stands for automatic rifle. Tim Walz even referred to them as a weapon of war and I know a lot of guys that have been to war, and every single one of them laughs at the idea of taking an AR-15 onto the battlefield. It all comes down, though, to education. Democrats know they don't have to be accurate because so few Americans actually have a working knowledge and understanding of the different types of weapons, different types of rounds that go with each, the capacity of right. each, both in terms of ballistics and, and magazine capacity. In my New York state here, we outlaw guns based on pieces of plastic. You can have a pistol grip and a collapsible stock, but you can't also have a hand grip, a forward hand grip. It's, it's absurd, but knowledge is the answer to all of this. And you're involved with some great educational efforts. Why don't you tell us what you're doing to get the American public more knowledgeable about guns and how they protect us? Well, I mean, there's so many issues that you're bringing up there. I just, since you mentioned Governor Waltz, I'll just mention the guy says he's a hunter. Apparently, he has been a hunter. Uh, you would think that he would have some basic knowledge about uh, these guns. You know, he goes, he, he never actually served in, uh, in a war footing uh, that's there, even though he made the claim that you're referring to, where he said that, you know, he's uh, carried weapons in war situations and he knows you know he doesn't think that americans should have things like ar-15s which he says are are weapons of war and as you say you know there's no military around the world that owns this 
type of AR-15 that civilians own here in the United States. These are semi-automatic guns. The types of rifles that are owned by militaries around the world have capabilities of firing multiple rounds with one pull of the trigger that's there, either a burst or fully automatic uh, modes that are there. Uh, that's not the type of gun that Americans have. Uh, these are not, you know, AR-15s or semi-automatic rifles. As I was saying before, they're functionally identical to any semi-automatic hunting rifle, a small caliber one at that, firing the same bullets with the same rapidity, doing the same damage. Um, and yet, you know, uh, the media doesn't seem to call them out on these types of false statements. As far as what we do, uh, you know, we look at crime generally, uh, but we do a lot on gun control issues. And, you know, we put out uh, research on our website at crimeresearch.org. Uh, we go through these things. We go through the statements that different politicians and others have made. And we're basically a group of academics who know about the data there and where to go and look up these things. Right. And the and the website is such a valuable resource. Uh, let me just shout out a couple of recent articles up there that you might be interested in going and checking out. One, Massive Errors in FBI's Archive Shooting Reports from 2014 to 2023. Another one I was very interested in this morning, Cases Where Armed Citizens Have Stopped Active Shooter Incidents. And the third, is the murder rate declining? In sharp contrast to the FBI, the CDC data shows 2022 is higher than 2020 and much higher than 2019. In our final minute here, um, maybe address the way the government has been uh, lying to us and doing narrative management with statistics. Well, I think it's more, more the media and the Democrats on this stuff. We have, for example, for crime, we have different measures of crime. Uh, there's the FBI data that looks at reported crimes, though less than half of police departments in the country are reporting full data to the FBI. And we have something called the National Crime Victimization Survey from the Bureau of Justice Statistics, which surveys 240,000 people a year, which gets a measure of total crime. And what you find in 2022, for example, while the FBI's measure of reported crime showed a 2% drop in violent crime, the National Crime Victimization data showed a 42% increase in total crime. And you would just think, most people, would you rather look at just crimes report to police or would you rather look at total crimes reported and unreported? It doesn't seem like a very difficult question to go and ask. Uh, yes, sir. But yet the media picks what data to go and look at based upon what, I think, unfortunately, what conclusion Sir, we got to go to cut it right there, John. I'm very sorry to cut you off, but we're sure. out of time here. Thank you so much for joining us. Definitely go to crime.